the supporting sciences. One is usul al-fiqh, the science of legal interpretation. How law is derived from revelation. The scholars of usul al-fiqh would say, our science is, is the key to all the other sciences. Because if you don't know where, you get, because the, the principles by which you derive, the, these are the principles, not really of fiqh, but these are the principles of sound derivation of meanings from texts. And so the scholars of usul tend to have, not tend to have, there's a danger in usul al-fiqh to have an inflated ego. Right? When I got to Damascus, one of, the scholars, one of the students asked, a very respected scholar, what should I study in usul al-fiqh? He said, he said, before you study usul al-fiqh, take care of your ego because usul has a tendency to inflate the ego. Right? So be, beware. Why? Because... These are the principles by which me, so if someone, the scholar of usul al-fiqh could argue with the faqih, say, look, you guys are talking about legal details. I know how these legal details are derived. So, you know, I'm a judge over you. Said, you could say to the scholar of aqidah, that you're arguing about what we believe. I know how these beliefs are derived from the primary text. So go back to your place. They can tell the scholar of hadith, you're reading the hadith, I know what they mean. Right? Tafsir, so you got, you're just talking, you're just sort of dancing around divine guidance. I know the meanings that, that are derived from it. Okay. I, am the, I am the authority on how these meanings are derived. What you're talking about is just sort of decorative understanding, deriving consequential meanings. That's my skill. Of course, all of them would go back. It said, unless you're a faqih, don't talk about fiqh. Unless you're a theologian, don't claim that you can derive sound meanings. Because you know the theory of the derivation of meanings. We, practic we know practically how, what, what are the derived meanings. And of course, that's not how it works. Sound understanding brings all these things together. Right? But this is very dangerous. You could, um, one of my teachers, like, It's a good place to be in, but it's not a, it's not good adab. One of my teachers has been calling me for several days. That please, I need to talk to you. And I know what he wants to talk to me about. It's very complicated. So I've, I've been waiting for this weekend to give. I'll probably call him after this class. May Allah help. Um, and I hope it's not Taymur's fault because Taymur went and saw him last weekend. So um, he said. He said, from what Allah tried and tested me with في طلبي للعلم أني بدأت في العلم بقراءة أصول الفقه He said, from what, the tribulations in my seeking of knowledge is that I began seeking knowledge by studying أصول الفقه So then, so he said, فشعرت نفسي حاكما على العلوم So I thought, considered myself to be a judge over all the Islamic sciences. I know how all of this is derived. So he went to Sheikh Abdul Rahman al shaghuri and he told him, study the Ajrumiya. He says, what do I do next? He says, study it again. He says, then what do I do next? He gave him, a, there's a very brief commentary in, on the Ajrumiya, which is barely longer than Ajrumiya, by Zaini Dahlan. He says, study that. He said, while it helped me build my grammar, it also <laughs> sort of, serve the purpose of deflating my ego a little because Arabic studying of grammar is not very self-satisfying. Um, so the purpose of usul al-fiqh is to understand textual interpretation. And it's important. Now at one level, the only person who needs usul al-fiqh is the mujtahid. Because right? the one who directly derives legal meanings from primary text is the mujtahid. Directly. But understanding textual interpretation, appreciating textual interpretation, being able to, to judge what is sounder textual interpretation, to assess you know, whether this meaning is, you know, to, to, to be able to appreciate textual interpretation is very important. Um,
and it guides sound legal application as well. And when you study usul al-fiqh, they'll, this is an investigation. Why do you need usul al-fiqh if the rulings are already derived? Uh, but there are many reasons, particularly related to understanding, appreciation, and sound application. And the, the lack of, of course, there's a danger in excess with usul al-fiqh, but there's also danger in remissness. There's a lot of very poor and shoddy legal reasoning going around in our times with people are, are poorly trained. If La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah